Hi everybody, it's me George here and I uh, thought I'd just do a, a quick re video real quick about uh, customer service and uh, customers themselves um, in the cell phone industry. Uh, I haven't done this kind of type of video in the car in a while. I thought I'd just do it now. Uh, you know, get ready to go to work. So, what I wanted to say real quick is this. Uh, I saw a video uh, today that um, Tito on Aloha Android did and uh, talking about uh, what he does. You know, he works uh, Sprint customer service in, in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, he works in the retentions department, which handles customers who want to leave. And they try to find solutions to fix it. And he did a pretty good job in the video. I, I always liked his videos and all. But um, there are there is a few things that I kind of disagree with what he has to say. Um, take off the seatbelt. Uh, the one thing is taking care of the customer and their issues and thinking that they get ripped off. Customers don't get ripped off customers there's a misunderstanding or there was a mistake made if you feel that people get ripped off why buy cell phones i'm sorry it's like saying with car salesmen how they got a bad reputation because it was consistently like that issues because of people complaining and how they treat their customers the two largest complaints right now for services is cell phones and cable services. Why? Because people want that badly. But to complain and say that you got ripped off, I'm sorry, it, it, it's it's because of other reasons. And people call, uh, when they call customer service and they send them over to customer service or they click to cancel and they go to retentions, they want to know, why are you, can you know, leaving our service? Is it because of the coverage? Is it because of the plans? Is it because of how you know experience at a store? Is it because uh, the pricing of the phones? Is it because of whatever it may be? They need to try to solve that problem, but sometimes they can't. And even uh, Tito said over other videos, there's times there's nothing he could do. It just says, I'm coming in, I want to leave, I don't care what you offer me, I don't want your service. Well, the moment you do that, you lose your phone number and you can't port your number. So if you're going to go to a different provider, make sure you port your number first and then cancel. Um, but basically what I'm trying to say is, and sometimes when you do that, it's done automatically once you port your number over if all your numbers or if you only have one number, it's canceled. Anyways, automatically. Um, it's... It's, it's not an easy process for them to do, you know. So cus if you're a customer, you know, give them a break. You know, they're trying to do their job. They're trying to do what they can to help you and stay with the company. You know, don't assume that you leave the one company to go to another. It's going to be better. I'll give you an example. When I was working with the Verizon, uh, we found out, I found out over the years working at Verizon that out of 100 people, 80 of them will return back to Verizon because T-Mobile had bad customer service and bad coverage. Now, the coverage has gotten better, but still not as good as Verizon. It's going to take them years to do that. All right, But until then, that was the reason why. Plus, the customer service is bad. If you look it up online... T-Mobile still has the highest amount of complaints of all uh, of the big four companies out there. So just because you left Verizon to go to T-Mobile because, oh, I'm going to get better customer service and better plans, the plan is not going to do you any good if the coverage is not good enough. You can't make phone calls. That's the main purpose they have it. So when they come back, they say, George, you were right. I didn't know that. And I go, well, I did. I told you that. I know the companies. I know what they're offering. You know? I, I don't know how else I could explain it. Um, let's see what else. Well, the other part is what we have to do as salespeople in the stores. When there's a problem, 
the customers don't call customer service first. They call the salesperson at the store first. Either they call or they come into the store. All right? There's a reason why. Uh, you know, the customers think that if there's an issue that I should be compensated. Not always. If it's a problem, misunderstanding, usually it can be fixed. But to compensate customers, to keep them as a customer, is not the way to do it because they lose money and they've noticed that over the years. And that's why uh, companies have to get more strict and tell customers and say, look, you signed and initialed the paperwork here. You understood. You can't come back and say no. Now, some people, I can understand there might be misunderstanding or confusion if they call back and say, well, when you told me initial, what was that uh, that I signed and you go over it, that's fine. But it's there in the store or over the phone, they call the store, the salesperson. They have to handle it first. They're in the front line first, not customer service, not retentions, the, the store reps or the managers of the store. They have to take care of the problem first. You know, customer service or retention is the last thing that they'll go to. You know, it's it's not right. It really isn't that right. And I feel that over the years, the 20 years of doing this, that I've seen times where salespeople have been really, really bad, not doing their job. Even though if you train them, you have to be on them like a hawk. You have to make sure they do it right. Meaning that if I look at the paperwork as a store manager and I didn't see those paperwork done right, I'm not happy. If I ask them, how was the customer when they left the store? Were they happy? How was the sale? You know, what, how did you do? You know, oh, the customer was great. Or the customer wasn't as happy, but they understand after I left. Well, explain me the reason why. That could be a problem. That's why salespeople will usually call the customer after a couple of days. Hey, how's the phone? So far, is it uh, pretty good? Is it what you were looking for? Yes, it is. Or no, it's not. And you can catch that ahead of time before it gets worse. All right? That's what I'm talking about. But the salespeople who are on it and they know they did it right, well, they're doing their job right. They're going to have less complaints. Um, it's not going to be easy for the customer and customers sometimes have to give us a break um, it's not you know it's not where you just sell the product and tell them the, uh, the service and that's it they have to do more um, I've seen at times as a sales rep customers being mean and nasty and being lying bastards you know, I've seen it happen many, many times. Many excuses. They wanted to return the phone and it's damaged. I'm like, no, sorry, I can't return it. It's damaged. That's the policy. I, I, I want to exchange it or I just don't want it. it. doesn't matter. It's damaged goods. You know, if you bought a big screen TV from Best Buy, you know, a 52 inch and there's a, a crack or a damage on the uh, TV, they're not going to return it. Why is it any different in a cell phone store? It seems like cell phone stores, no matter what, they have to do what the customer says. No. You know, you knew you damaged it. You knew that if, if you don't have insurance, you're stuck with the phone. You know, if it's a defect, that's different. You know, within a certain amount of days, if you return or exchange it, usually they'll do it right there on the spot in the store. But in other cases, I've seen where, uh, you know, damage has been made on the phone. They can't return it because it's damaged. They get no money back. Uh, and the last thing is the restocking fee. That's the one thing that a lot of people complain about. And they say, why do cell phone companies charge for restocking fee? They all do it. Even Best Buy does it at their stores. And the reason why the companies, cell phone companies, do that is that they get charged from the distributor or wholesaler that they get the phones from, that they charge them that fee because it costs money for them as well. 
because they, the distributor and wholesaler, have to get it through the manufacturer. They get charged as well. So it goes down the line. So if they sell the phone that was brand new and they return it, they cannot sell it back as a brand new phone. They can only sell it as like maybe a certified pre-owned or a used phone. And they're not going to make money on the investment of the phone. They're going to lose. So having that $25, $35, or even $45 on some, uh, there's one company I forgot who charges $45, but uh, on a restocking fee, they recoup some of that cost. And that's fair. You know? Um, you buy a cart, it loses value the moment you leave the lot. There are some car manufacturers, they say, oh, you know, a certain amount of days, we'll still give you the full refund, but still the value won't be there. And I guarantee you that. So, you know, that's the reason why they do that, and that's a fair thing to do, you know, to charge for restocking fee. Now, if the phone wasn't open, you know, the plastic, you know, opened or taped, and hasn't been activated you most of the time or I say most of the time they won't charge you a restocking fee yeah uh, I've had it at my, uh, my store that I worked at that's that was the policy as long as it wasn't activated or opened up we won't charge you a restocking fee but if you do the activation and they always do it there in the store sorry restocking fee it's used you know it used to be an old policy that if it's more than um, more than one hour use of the phone, of minutes, 60 minutes, uh, they they won't return the phone. Uh, actually, Metro PCS is the only company that still does that. Uh, all the other companies don't, which is kind of weird. So the customer could do like five hours worth of calls and they could still return. But Metro is like, nope, more than 60 minutes, we can't return it because it's considered a used phone. And I agree. Yeah. Um, and hopefully, you know, me explaining this makes it a little bit easier for people out there. So, anyways, uh, that's all I have for now. Um, I know this was helpful for a lot of people. I know some people may not like it. <laughs> and that's fine. Uh, give it a thumbs up. I know it's a good video. It, it lets me know that, uh, that it was helpful to you. And if you have any questions about return exchanges and anything of this topic, you know, leave it, uh, you know, down below with the comments and I'll try to see what I could do to help you or there are other people that may watch it to help you out. But I've been doing this for 20 years. I know what I'm, you know, doing. Um, I'm trying to get my own cell phone store shop uh, hopefully soon. That's my goal right now. That's why I've been doing, trying to work hard to try to get that going. So, <laughs> uh, that's all I have. Thank you, and um, I'll see you on the next video. Take care.